Affinity Designer makes it easy to organize colors in your workspace. Today we'll look at swatches, palettes, and how global colors can save you time and give you more opportunity to experiment. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to talk about how to work with swatches and palettes in Affinity Designer. Now to get some definitions out of the way, I consider a swatch to be a particular color and a palette to be a collection of swatches or a collection of colors. You should have a swatches tab over here, but if you don't on Windows, you can go to Window Swatches and then it'll show it there. Now when you first open this tab, there'll be lots of default palettes that come with Affinity Designer. So if you click on this drop down here, you can see all these different options, a lot of these kind of Pantone standard definitions here. And these are useful if you're doing a lot of print work. You also have the standard colors and some grays and some gradients to begin with. Now the key thing to remember about this tab, like a lot of these tabs, is that most of your options are gonna be accessed by clicking these three lines here. So when you have the swatches tab enabled and you click on those three lines, you'll see all these different options you have for swatches and palettes. Let's first talk about how to create a palette. So with my swatches selected here, I can click the three lines. And the main way to create a palette is to select one of these options here, add application palette or add document palette. Now you'll see this pattern in a couple of the menus that talk about the difference between application and document. When we create an application palette, that palette will be available in any file we open in this instance of Affinity Designer. When we create a document palette, that palette will just be saved with the file I have open right now. So it'll just be limited to the current file and I won't be able to access it in other files. Of course, this is good when you just have a palette you wanna use once and you don't want it to be cluttering your palette list for the future. Now, another way to create a palette is to select this option down here, create palette from document. And once again, you can see we have the application and document option. I'll create a document palette here. So now you see I have a new palette that got created here. By default, it gets the name of my current file that I have open. And all these colors it got from the shapes I have open here. So you can see all these fill colors became swatches in my palette. And not only that, but it also took the stroke color of this heart. So that's what that pink there is. So I'll delete this palette because I'm not going to use that right now. Now yet another option is to create a palette from an image. And that's right under the option I just selected before. I can say create palette from image here. Now what I can do is I can select a file on my computer and I'll select this JPEG here. And what it does is it will give me colors that it picked out of that image. Now I can also choose how many colors I want. So maybe I want more, maybe I want 14. Now note that just selecting it won't refresh this. You have to click preview to see the new colors here. So now I can see the 14 colors it chose out of my document. Or I can go back down to say four. And then once again, I can choose if I want it to be a application or a document palette, or I can just add it to whatever currently selected. I'll say application and I'll click create. And now I have my new palette and it was named after my image. So I'll back up now and I'll show you how to create a palette from scratch. So as the first option I showed you, I'll create a document palette. So now you see here, I have this empty palette here with no swatches in it. So the easiest way to add a color to your palette is to click this button here, which says add current fill to palette. And your current fill is this circle here. So if I click that, you can see it got added to my palette. So if I change my fill color, let's make it some dark red. If I click the add button here, it added my color as a swatch. Now what you can also do is add a color from an object. So here I can click on my star. You notice that it filled in the color over here. I could click this button and add it, but I'll show you another way to do it. I could right click on my star and then I have this option down here that says add to swatches. And I can add the fill, I can add the line, or I can add both at the same time. So when it says line, what it means is the stroke. This shape currently doesn't have a stroke, but I'll add the fill. And you can see I added my yellow color here. This heart does have a fill and a stroke. So let's see what that does. Add to swatches. I'll say from both. And you can see I added the red and the pink on the edge. Now, by the way, when I said add to swatches, you may have noticed this global thing here. We'll talk about global later on in the video. Now we have these colors here and that's all nice, but how do we actually use them? Well, it's quite simple. I created this new shape here and it has this kind of boring gray color. Let's give it a more interesting color from our swatches. So I'll select this shape and all I have to do is simply click on one of the colors in my palette. So you can see I changed it to that blue there. I can change it to yellow. If I wanna add a stroke, I can do that. And if I go back to my swatches over here, I can change the color of my stroke. So make sure you have the stroke selected when you do that. If I select the fill again, that'll change the fill. Now swatches are accessible pretty much anywhere you could use a color. So let me add a gradient here. And let's say I wanted to change the colors of my gradient. Well, I could click on one of these control points here and I could click on the swatch. And now I've added red to that part of the gradient. I could change the other part of the gradient here. Let's make it yellow. And I've made a gradient here based on colors that I picked from my swatch. If I edited the gradient up here, let's say I changed the color, you'll also notice that in this dropdown, I can select swatches. So I could choose my color here. 
let's say I want to do something like add a drop shadow to this circle with a certain color. Well, I could click on the FX here. I could select outer shadow. And once again, in this color menu here, I have the ability to choose swatches. So let's say I want to give it a pink drop shadow for some reason. You can see I was able to choose my color that way. So basically, anywhere there's a color picker, you're going to have the ability to use swatches. Now, if you want to delete a color from your swatch menu, it's quite easy. You just right click on it and you can choose delete fill. And it'll just ask to confirm. You can say yes. Now, there's a bug I noticed on my other Windows computer. If you right click on a swatch here, sometimes this ability to delete the fill is grayed out. So this seems to be a bug in Affinity 2.3 on Windows. I checked the Affinity forums and they know about the issue and it's been reported. So hopefully it'll be fixed in a future update. Now we talked about using swatches to make a gradient earlier. You can also go the other way. You can save gradients as a swatch. So let's do that. It's actually very simple. It's not much different than what we've already done. Now with my object selected here, all I have to do is click the button we clicked before, which is add fill color as gradient. And you see it was added. Now, one important thing to note is that when you save a gradient as a swatch, it saves the type of gradient it is. So linear, radial, elliptical, and so on. So right now I have a radial gradient. If I add it to the palette, you can see the icon is slightly different. It looks like a circle. And over here next to it, you have my linear one. So if I have my new square here, if I click on my linear gradient, you see it added the linear gradient there. If I click on the circular one, you see it added it as a circle. It's a little hard to see that it's a circle, but if I move it, you can see that it is. But if you ever apply gradient and you don't like its type, you can always change it up here. So I can make this linear and you can rescale it if you want. Now you may have been wondering, we've created colors in our palette. What happens if we want to change those colors and have them affect everywhere we use them? Well, that's where global colors come into play. And the good news is that it works pretty much just like the way we've been using colors so far. So most of what you learned already is going to be applicable. So let me show you how it works. I have this square selected here. So right next to the button we were using before, there's this other button with a chain link on it. And we can click that button to add a global color. So you can see I got this red swatch here, but there's this little white corner on it. And that means this is a global color. Let me show you what that means by adding some more demo shapes here. I'll add a circle and I'll add a star. So I'll select these three shapes and just to make sure they're using the global color, I'll click on the global color here. Now I'll click off. And what's interesting is I can click on this global color here and it says swatches because that's what I used before. But let me click another drop down. Let me choose HSL color wheel and watch what happens as I change the color here. You'll notice my shapes here are changing color automatically. And that's because they were using this global color. Now I used my red square to create the global color, but I never went back and assigned that global color to my square here. So that's why that one's not changing. But if I wanted to change too, I could easily just select this and then click on the green here. And now they're all linked using the same color. So I'll change this. And you can see whatever I change it to, it's going to change all of them. Now you may be wondering, how do I know if an object has a global color assigned to it? Well, if you click on the object and then if you go to the color tab, you'll see that it has a global color option here. And if you want to edit it, you can click edit global color. As you can see, it's changing all of them. Here's another document I created and all these stars are using global colors. So perhaps I didn't like this pink color. I could double click on it. Maybe I'll change it to blue. You can see with one simple change, I changed all those stars. Then my yellow stars, maybe I want them to be orange. I can change it there. So you can see that using global colors makes it very easy to change all the places that color is used. It's much easier than just selecting all the objects in my layers stack and changing the color manually that way. Now, as a side note, one other thing you may notice is this option here that says recent, and these are the recent colors. Now you may be wondering what makes a color recent. Well, it basically means a color you've actually used or applied to something. So right now I don't have anything selected. If I change this green here to something like teal, if I click close, you can see it doesn't really go into my recent colors. But if I select a square and then I change it to teal, now it does go into my recent colors. So the colors that get added to the recent queue are colors that you actually applied to some object in some way. Have you created swatches in Affinity Designer? How do you think the ease of use compares to other programs? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.